If you're somebody who works hard at their job, has plenty of experience and a shiny degree, but keeps getting looked over for promotions and pay raises, then what you're missing might be social capital. What social capital? And how can you use it to grow in your career? Well, that's what this video is all about. I'm Dr. George Love. I've been managing and leading people and organizations for over two decades. I help working adult students to enhance their career prospects and strategies by using the wealth of research out there on topics such as management, leadership, and organizational behavior. One thing I've learned is that your hard work won't matter to the movers and decision makers in your company unless you make it matter. And how you make it matter is social capital. Okay, so let's talk about what social capital is and why it's important. Here's something I learned in my first ever graduate course in business. Performance doesn't necessarily mean promotion. In fact, average workers who spend their time networking and getting to know their coworkers can see promotion opportunities more frequently than the hardest working employees who don't do this kind of networking. That networking produces social capital, which can be defined simply as the benefits and resources that a person can draw from their social network. So how can you begin to develop your social capital to achieve your goals? First step, develop your social network and learn to influence others. If you're going to develop social capital, you will need that social network. A classic article on no social networks is the piece that I have included in the description and title, Competent Jerks, Lovable Fools, and the Formation of Social Networks. In the piece, the researchers argue that even if you are only marginally competent, if you are likable, people tend to want to work with you over someone who is highly competent, but hard to be around, what they call the jerk. What that said to me was that I needed to make sure that I understood how to make a good impression and be likable. The main thing is to find time and opportunities to talk to your coworkers. That can mean stopping by somebody's desk or finding time on your schedule to grab lunch. When you're in a meeting with others, make sure to talk about more than just business and express genuine interest in their interests and hobbies outside of work. Try to find people outside of your department to have those meetings with too. In short, don't be a jerk. Step two, organizational citizenship behavior and generating social capital. You're working on step one and expanding your social network. What next? Well, as you get to know more people throughout your organization, you should identify opportunities above and beyond your defined duties to help improve your organization. This is what is called organizational citizenship behavior or OCB. Engaging an OCB can mean a load of different things. It can mean helping to organize a team building day or an after work social event. It can mean getting a card for a coworker when they're sick and getting others to sign it. Simply cleaning up after yourself instead of waiting for someone else to do it can be an act of organizational citizenship. Actions like these can help you develop social capital as you start to positively impact the organization and the people in it. The next question is, what do you do with this social capital you are accumulating? Step three, power and the wise use of social capital. For quite a number of years now, when I have been discussing social capital with my students, I note that developing it is one thing, but using it to get things done in your organization is another. As you are helping out others, you can draw on your relationships to ask those in your social network for help when you need to get something done, whether it be more resources for a project or opportunities for promotion. There are important things to consider when using your social capital. Getting that project you want to prove, for example, might mean someone else's does not. You getting that promotion may mean someone else doesn't get it. So use your social capital, but make sure that how you use it doesn't make you come off as a jerk. If you remember anything from this video, remember this. It is good to work hard, but just working hard in and of itself is not the best way to advance in your organization. You're going to have to polish your people skills, actively network, and make ongoing connections in your organization. At the same time, you need to identify ways to go beyond your defined role. Look for ways to add value to your organization through the use of OCB, especially when it comes to helping others in your personal network. Finally, you then need to take the social capital 
to influence others so that you can get things done that build your personal brand and reputation. That way you could advance into a formal leader in your organization. How does that sound? Do you have any tips or tricks to developing your networking in the workplace? Sound off in the comments and make sure to subscribe for more videos on topics ranging from business skills to learning tips.